Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're going to be adjusting the carburetor on the Phantom 85 and playing with some timing adjustments for ignition to hopefully make it sound a little less like an amplified popcorn machine when you're just trying to cruise around. The adjustments we've been able to obtain in this video will help it sound a little less like this. and a little more like this. We'll also be discussing when and where you would want to use these adjustments as well as why you wouldn't want to use them and I'll be giving you some additional thoughts and opinions about this motor kit while we're waiting for its new home to arrive. Because the Phantom 85 is built on the YD100 bottom end, it suffers from the same advanced ignition timing that the YD100 does and we dealt with in the past. In my experience with a variety of different motorized bike engines, it's completely normal for them to four-stroke when they're under light or no load. And this is also explained in great detail on a post that I'll leave a link in the description for, which will help you better understand exactly what we're dealing with and why. To give you a better point of reference, here's what I would consider to be normal and acceptable four-stroking under cruising load. I'll also be leaving a link in the description to an article which will help you better understand and visualize the modification that we're making. Alright, so we are going to retard the timing a little bit on the Phantom 85. A viewer had commented and reminded me that the YD100s have significantly advanced timing, which is why a lot of times they don't like to cruise. Mid RPM, you'll get misses, four stroking, and basically anytime you let off the throttle, they'll pull just fine. You give it some throttle and they grunt right up to speed, but they don't like to cruise. And seeing that the Phantom 85 has a YD100 bottom end, um, I suspect that is the case in this situation. So let's get to it. We're gonna take this cover off. We are going to remove the magnet. Now note this shaft doesn't have a lock washer, so we're going to put some thread locker on it when we're all done. Now note the notch on the magnet. If you move it so that the notch is towards the top, you'll notice that the notch is towards the one o'clock position. If you take this off and you put it back on backwards, you'll have spark, but your motor will not fire. Usually these magnets come off pretty easy, but sometimes they can be a bear to take off. And I don't really have a good solution for you. Just work at it and be as gentle as you can because you don't want to muck up these plates. Now our wood drift key here slides right out. Usually, these are pressed into the shaft to where you'll have to use some pliers to get them out and you'll have to lightly sand the edges to get them to go back in. No big deal. No, ours has a washer behind the magnet to protect the seal. And here's a closer look at this seal that came with our kit. As you can see, it was really mangled when they installed it and I'm surprised that it's holding right now. But it's sealed, it's running, and I don't see any oil around here. These are really easy to replace. Now that we got our supervisor with us, take your key, put the bottom half, the cir circular half, into some channel locks, grab yourself a file, you could probably use sandpaper, it'd just take a lot longer, and you're going to begin to shave down the exposed area of the key. 
Hopefully you guys can see that. Well, we've shaved off about a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half of the key. And that's probably more than enough. Now, it doesn't matter which side of this key you shave because you can always flip it around and you'll be good. But you do have to insert it the right way to ensure that you are going to get the results you're trying to achieve. Now, for us, we're trying to retard the time. The magnet, when the motor is running, is going to rotate in the clockwise position. It's going to go this way. Okay. So to retard it, we want to move it in the opposite direction just slightly. Now, if you have a degree wheel and you want to take the time to get real fancy about it, you can measure out the exact degrees and timing that you're removing or giving. We're not going to do that. We're just going to retard it a little bit, see how she feels, and then we can play with it more if it's too much or if it's not enough, so on and so forth. Now, to retard the timing, we will need to rotate the magnet in the counterclockwise direction. So I want to make sure that the section we cut off is facing the clockwise position. Now we have our key inserted. We have the shave section facing the clockwise direction. The tricky part is going to be putting the magnet back on without the magnet immediately catching the key. I've always been able to do it with just a pick, so I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, you can't see it in the camera, but you can take your light, shine it in the notch, and make sure that your key is seated in there. Sometimes it can get bound up on the back side between the slot and the magnet, and you don't want that because it can chew into your seal and eventually just come loose, and you won't really have any way to keep your adjustment. Now you can see with that shaved key, we have a lot of potential adjustment. Now, you can see where the magnet's original position was by rotating it clockwise. It will butt up against the non-shave section of the key. And on a stock key, this would be our stock timing position. Give or take a degree, because sometimes they can be a little loose. This amount of timing adjustment is probably going to be too much in our situation. So, you may not want to shave your key so much but just because you can move it all the way back doesn't mean you have to. You can simply put it where you want it and then tighten it up. The trick is going to be keeping the shaft from rotating and the magnet from rotating while you're tightening it down. Um, I'm just basically going to hold it, tighten the nut, and then be done with it. For our first test, which you'll see here in a moment, we only retarded the timing about half of our available adjustment. In my opinion with these motors, the two most common causes of force stroking is a too rich fuel and air mixture or bad ignition timing, but there's a handful of other things that can cause it as well. Too much oil in your mix causing a poor combustion cycle, a severely misadjusted spark plug gap, a lack of compression, a squish gap that's too wide, poor port timing, and those are just to name a few. Our particular Phantom 85 came with two base gaskets giving us a squish gap that was over one millimeter. I'll play around with this later, trying to tighten the squish gap, which I do suspect is causing a good amount of our four stroking. But I also suspect those two base gaskets are there for a good reason. So we're going to do a little bit of research before diving into that. My knowledge is limited on timing adjustments, so I'll explain some situations where I feel you might not want to consider making this adjustment until you've done more research. For instance, if you're on a bike that's going to constantly be under load, such as something with a small sprocket, 36 or smaller, or all-out performance, if you're just always going to be on the throttle and you want constant pull, I believe the stock timing was just fine, as when I hit the throttle, this thing is a mad beast. Retarding the timing will affect performance. How much? I can't tell you for sure. All I know is at the moment with this current bike, I'm not going to be gunning the throttle very often. If I'm completely honest, on a Walmart bike, this motor terrifies me, and I personally believe this can destroy Walmart bikes, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. I've read conflicting information about timing adjustments. One article, which we linked in the description, says retarding the timing can actually help high RPM performance, 
but in my experience that's not the case. What do I know? I've noticed in a lot of situations it can actually help low in pool. It smooths out the motor quite a bit. But your results may vary, so I suggest trying this, and if you don't like it, you can always go back, as retarding the timing really doesn't have much to hurt on the motor as opposed to advancing the timing. On to our second thought, and that goes back to the Walmart bikes. Now on the channel, for the longest time, we've been budget-oriented, simply because I've always felt that a bike that cost around the same price as the motor is a good match, and we've proven that over the years. This is a different game. I really don't recommend putting this motor on a Walmart bike. At the very least, because I know you guys are going to do it, have a lot of self-control. This thing is no joke, and I believe it will destroy a Walmart bike. You'll have bent, snapped axles, your spokes are going to go through hell, and that's just assuming you don't wreck like I did immediately after testing the bike. The main reason I posted that failed wheelie, which wasn't an attempt, but whatever, it was mainly just so you guys would know and not make the same mistake I did. I don't want you guys to get hurt, so hopefully it was for the good. Anyways, if you really have to get this motor, please ensure that you've got a solid bike to put it on. And that's what we're going to do. For the first time in history, we're finally going to get one of the gas bike frames, and you'll see it in its new home shortly. We're just waiting on it to show up. You need to have a beefy setup for this motor, that's all I can say. Alright, let's get on with the test. Make sure when you're running these tests you first let your motor warm up before making a decision on whether or not it's an improvement. For us, the minor timing adjustment we started with really didn't make much of a difference. I noticed that the four-stroking was a little more consistent, the motor wasn't as jerky as it was before, but we needed to do more. Before making another timing adjustment, I first decided to adjust the carburetor. We're going to lean out the clip by moving it up one notch. This didn't do much for us either. It did make a difference, but not the difference we're looking for. The motor just sounded and felt softer, as it normally does when you lean out the mix. I brought our temperature gauge along for the ride so we could get some comparisons with head temperatures. Currently running at 348 degrees on the head. I'm not sure exactly what the maximum safe temperature is for these motorized bike kits or this particular cylinder, but from what I understand, in general, 450 degrees Fahrenheit is the maximum safe operating temperature, and ideally I'd want to stay well below that. Currently, we're still safe if that information is correct. We then made another adjustment to the carburetor, lifting the clip one more notch to lean out the mix a little more. This did seem to help just a little bit, but the misfires were still all over the place. So at this point, I don't think any further carburetor adjustments are going to help us out. Plus, it softened up the motor a little more than I like, took away some of our pool. Didn't care for that. It also cost us a temperature increase of about 20 degrees on certain parts of the head. At this point, I decided to go ahead and richen the needle clip back down one notch and adjust the timing further.
final timing adjustment gave us the results we were looking for. Be it not perfect, of course, but I still consider this to be well within acceptable limits. What you guys are probably not being able to pick up through the audio is the difference in volume. The pops and misfires are much softer, and now I can ride this through the neighborhood without it sounding like a straight pipe. As before, the factory adjustments were very loud, and you'll know if you pick up one of these motors what I'm talking about. I do suspect that a little more four stroking on this motor should be expected as it simply has more power to offer and when you are cruising it's going to have less of a demand on the motor which will amplify the effect. With that being said this is about as far as I feel confident going on the ignition timing. Any other further adjustments would probably need to be made with compression. I plan on taking one of the base gaskets out eventually but as mentioned earlier we're going to do some research on that first. I do apologize, I know a lot of you guys want to see a top speed run with this motor, but until I get a bike that I feel can safely handle it, that's not going to happen. Soon, but not right now. And so I can't really tell you how much this affects high-end performance, and I know that's what a lot of you guys care about, but practical performance is still important. The motor's great if it's got a lot of power, but if you can't, you know, cruise down the neighborhood to get to where you're going, what does all that power mean? And for you guys who plan on keeping this motor on a cheaper frame, this adjustment might actually save you as you won't feel the need to constantly hit the throttle and get off it because the motor's so loud. You can cruise now, and if you do upgrade your bike in the future, you can put the timing right back and enjoy some nice full throttle. I hope you guys got some useful information out of this video and this helps you out. And until next time, ride safe.